the question is, I guess, with, there's been almost 500 Conservative councillors have lost their seats in these local elections. Did they lose their seats because they were useless councillors or did they lose their seats because of the government and the Prime Minister? So I was out campaigning with my uh, old colleagues at Wandsworth. I was a councillor in Wandsworth for 12 years in the 90s and into 2000s. And uh, there was a, a interesting set of messages from places like Wandsworth and Westminster, very much around the global fight against inflation and the spike in, obviously, energy costs, which then reflects into their utility bills and the uh, you know, weekly shop as well. Uh, but then we won in Harrow. So I think it's important to learn the lessons uh, from the, those very good councillors that lost their seats and listen uh, to, of course, their uh, our constituents as what they're saying about these things, but also to look at what happened in places like Harrow or even in my patch in the West Midlands in Nuneaton, where we seem to be getting even more momentum, winning more seats there. And of course, in Newcastle under line, which uh, I think for the first time in 25 years, we've won there as well. Um, the one thing to, to remember is obviously we're in midterm. Uh, we've come out of global pandemic. We're facing this global battle against inflation. The Americans are facing it. The Europeans are as well. The Chancellor's tried to put 22 billion into helping people in the next 12 months, 22 billion in 12 months. Um, so I think we have to you know, learn the lessons from this, N not in any way take um, you know, what we're doing in, in places like the West Midlands for granted, but also try and win back in London and the South. Um, so it's a mixed picture, tough night for us, but I don't think it's uh, you know, any better for um, Labour in the sense that Keir Starmer um, has gone backwards in places like Nuneaton. Um, they've stood still even in Hartlepool. So, um, you know... To be speaking for a Labour MP, but, but we... But, but we want to ask... have not, it's not been a clear victory we, for them on this. No, no, we, we, want, we want to ask you about... We're going to ask a Labour MP about the Labour Party. We want to ask you about the government. You, you, you're sort of saying that it's down to a lot to do with the cost of living and those inflationary pressures. Uh, rather than the government and the prime minister per se, but you know, presumably, if uh, if you're really concerned about the cost of living in Wandsworth and Westminster, you'd want to keep voting for a council that was having low council tax. So that would indicate, surely, that it wasn't about the cost of living for those people, because they had a council that was helping them with the cost of living. It must be about something else. So, I, do you not think that the sort of things like Partygate and the integrity of the prime minister was a factor in these in these elections? Well, I went out campaigning uh, with the team, um, hours and hours of campaigning. Uh, I think I had only one person on the doorstep mention uh, parties. Um, actually, it was much more about you know, some local issues, very, very local. I, I would describe them as hyper-local to their, to their particular street um, in their area. Um, but, of course, there are some national issues as well. And I think, you know, the... Uh, backlog on the NHS, safer streets, a lot of stuff played into this. Um, and of course, you know, we have to make sure we address that. Uh, we are midterm, but I think next week's Queen's speech, I hope, will also demonstrate that we've got a plan on the economy uh, and recovery from COVID, a plan for the backlog on the NHS, and a plan on safer streets and you know, security at home and abroad in it when we've got a war in Europe is something that we should focus on. Yeah, and I think Hakeem, actually up in, you, 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 it, it seemed that the Conservative Party did well in those red wall seats. We held on, it seemed like a very strong performance up there. However, are we, like the Labour Party had the collapse of the red wall, are we going to see the collapse of the blue wall down south? Because that seems to be a weakness because those were the areas we were losing. So have we taken our, what I'd say, traditional Tory voters for granted? So I think um, if you look at what's happened in Harrow, uh, we should understand, you know, why did Harrow come across to us and what are the things that appeal to residents in Harrow to come across to the Conservative Party um, and of course to understand what's happening in other parts of uh, London and the South as well. Um, uh, that's going to be an important piece of work that we'll do. I genuinely think though that the, the, the 
general election where turnouts are much higher, uh, people want to see what are you planning to deliver for, for them, whether it's, you know, in my portfolio on you know, a, a great school with a great teacher in every postcode for their child at the right time in the right place, skills, whether it's apprenticeships or T-levels or the lifelong learning entitlement that we're going to bring in where anyone can retrain, upskill and reskill at any time in their life and we'll stand behind them. Um, they want to see delivery of things that matter to them. They want to see us make sure we focus on the economy, as I talked about earlier. So that is, I think, uh, has to be what the nation hears from the Queen's speech next week and what we then deliver over the next two and a half years. But the one thing I would sort of just end by saying is I stood in 1997, uh, uh, Esther, and I remember 97 uh, painfully. People don't vote for split parties. They, they don't like divided teams. And I think we're much better off united and getting our work done, getting the message across that we're delivering on national security at home, protecting our borders. You know, the points-based system is helping us, actually. We're, we're getting people who come in for jobs that we need them to do, not just having open, chaotic borders. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.